burning down pretty good now. It's wasted all this time and effort. Let's give this another shot. Hello, welcome back to another episode from Pale Horse Survival and Tactical. I'm Bill, glad you could join me. Today we're going to make a pair of authentic Native American rawhide sandals. Stay tuned. So for this project I have two pieces of rawhide here. And rawhide is rawhide. It's untanned leather in its raw form and it, the fibers have not been broken down uh, when it's wet it's pliable very strong durable material uh, when it's dry it's hard and what I use for a lot of my projects it's very readily available uh, is uh, rawhide dog chews and that's what all of these are here. Uh, just go to the pet store, find the size that you need, uh, get a, a really big bucket or a kettle or whatever you have, fill it up with water, stick it in there, let it soak overnight, and what happens is what, what makes the rawhide hard like this is uh, collagen. So the collagen, when you soak it in water, it will reconstitute and become soft. Well, soft here. When it's dry, it will harden back up and become hard. And another characteristic of rawhide is it tends to shrink. You can kind of stretch it when it's wet. You can make cordage out of this, and it makes really good lashings. Uh, so when you lash it on nice and tight, when it's wet, uh, as it dries, it'll tighten and, and, and it becomes hard as a rock again. It'll uh, it'll shrink down and become hard as a rock, and uh, it, it makes for a, an extremely secure and durable uh, lashing and cordage material. Uh, you can also make rawhide glue out of this, which is the old original glue. It makes a really good glue, but you have to use a hot water extraction method. Now I'm going to shoot a video on that. We're in red flag conditions and fires, barbecues, even portable uh, camp stoves are strictly forbidden because of all the fires that we've had. So uh, I'm kind of twiddling my thumbs and waiting for all that. The restrictions to lift because I actually have quite a few videos uh, that I need to shoot but it requires fire. Some more primitive cooking videos and uh, rawhide glue and I'm going to show you some other tricks with rawhide glue that I haven't seen anybody else cover how to properly cure the glue once it's extracted etc but anyways I'm getting off topic here so what we're going to do today we're going to make uh, some authentic Native American rawhide sandals and this is a, uh, a technique that was shown to me uh, by an elder many many years ago when I was back in my teens and uh, very simple to make uh, a number of Native American tribes uh, utilize rawhide for sandals 
and they all vary a little bit from from tribe to tribe or location to location uh, so I'm going to show one technique today and I may do a couple other videos down the road there's a few other uh, variations of this too but this is a very simple way to make some primitive footwear if you're in a long-term uh, primitive living situation uh, your boots and your shoes are eventually going to wear out and uh, to have the knowledge and the skills to utilize uh, natural materials that you can harvest from nature is very important in a long-term situation otherwise you're going to be going without shoes uh, any means to protect your feet so first thing we're going to do we're going to have to uh, get the outline of the foot and since the rawhide is going to shrink just a little bit we're going to go a little wide on this and I got the other piece over here we're going to bypass this hole and once we get the outline uh, of the uh, foot then we'll go ahead and we're going to cut those out there's only a few holes to punch there's a couple tabs we have to keep in mind to, to include in this and then I have some uh, deer uh, buckskin deer lacing here it's really soft amazingly soft and we're going to use that for the lacing material so with that said uh, stick with me I'll be right back okay so we're going to go ahead we're going to get the outline here. Uh, I'm just using a gel pen. Rumor has it they say they can, it'll write on anything. So we're going to put that to the test. Uh, if you're going full blown primitive, you can just use a piece of charcoal. Break a piece of charcoal off from your campfire and use that as a marker to put your, uh, your marks on. But we want to go a little wide here. I'm just going maybe an eighth of an inch wide with these. Now right about here, actually, two tabs here I guess it'll be enough hmm. actually what I'm gonna do is I didn't account for got ahead of myself here I didn't account for the tabs we have to have two tabs that come up here and I got just ahead of myself on this project so okay shift the foot to the left a little and redo some lines here no biggie we got it Okay, and for the tabs, we want the tabs about right here. Just about where your instep starts. So just kind of eyeball a spot down.
make your tabs about an inch long. You want them across even with one another so you can kind of sight down the top. Bring them across here. Okay, so that's the right one. And I'll go ahead and get the left one done. And okay. I shall return. I've got the left foot outlined here. And the right over on this side. do now, we're going to go ahead and uh, cut these out. Rawhide cuts pretty easily when it's wet. You don't want to cut it when it's dry. It's very hard and it's uh, very rough on a blade. And all of these little scraps, save those. You make rawhide glue out of those. You never want to just throw those away. Just skirting right on the edge of that hole here. And then these larger cutoff pieces, I usually just save, put them in a bag, and those can be used for uh, future projects or cordage. You can even make bowstrings. out of the uh, rawhide cordage. There's the left.
a piece that big. You can get some cordage out of it. <clears throat> so I'm going to go ahead and cut the video. I'm going to cut this one out and then we'll proceed to the next step. Stick with me. Okay, so <clears throat> have the uh, two patterns cut out. This is the uh, the extras. Small pieces will be saved uh, for our rawhide glue in the future. The larger ones uh, can be used for other projects. You can get a lot of cordage out of that big one right here. So I'm going to go ahead. Uh, we're going to punch a few holes, and uh, I'll show you how to find out. Uh, where to punch those holes and uh, then we'll go ahead and uh, run the lacing. Stay tuned. Okay, so what you want to do here, position your foot on your pattern. Make sure it's even. You have an even amount of overlap all the way around. You take your pen. Now between your big toe on the next one in I'm going to put a mark I'm going to go over three toes one two three and you're going to put a mark again right down in here just like that and do the same thing with the other side and then we're going to go ahead and punch some holes stay tuned okay over here on a, a log here we use as a work station go ahead and punch a few holes into this it's a little portable leather punch that I picked up. Fits right in my possibles bag, so it's something I can bring along with me for projects. Now, if you don't have a pair of scissors and you're going full blown primitive, uh, what I do, I take my knife and I baton it straight in to a tree uh, so the blade, the sharp edge is facing up and then you can take your, your project that you're working on and you can slowly move it back and forth as you, you work your way down and it works really good, you just have to take your time it'll, it'll, uh, you can cut your project out that way uh, or you can use a piece of sharp flint or obsidian, uh, chert, whatever you happen to have on hand. And if you don't have a hole punch and you're going primitive, you can use the tip of your knife blade, you can use a bone awl, uh, you know, utilize whatever you have uh, on hand. Okay, so here's the right, here's the left, and I didn't bring a hammer with me, so I'm using a little hammer stone that I just found on the ground. I'm gonna punch a couple holes. So here's the two between the toes. I'm going to punch these two out. And if you're using a punch, you want to, uh, so you don't dole out your tips. This is pine. You want to have a, uh, whatever you're hammering into it needs to be a soft surface. Otherwise you'll, uh, you'll dole this out quickly. So there's those two. Now you spin it around to the tabs. You want to put a hole in each tab. Don't get too close to the edge up here. You want to leave about an eighth of an inch. Just center it up. like that. Spin it around. And 
Do the same on the left. And now the tabs. Now these work pretty good. Um, when it dries out, they're going to be stiff. I would recommend, see they're already starting to dry out, they're not stiff yet. But I would recommend putting them on and walking with them so you can break them in as they dry. That'll break the, the fibers down. Uh, on this material here, the rawhide material. <clears throat> I wouldn't wait until they, you know, make them and then wait until they're stiff as a board to try and walk in them. They're, they're, it's going to be pretty difficult to break them down, so I break them in as they're drying. Uh, just my uh, my advice on these. So, so now we have our holes here and on the tabs. So we're going to go back to the uh, the wool blanket and we're going to go ahead and uh, and lace it up. Stick with me. Back over here. So you take your rawhide lacing. Now we're going to do this. This is the top. This is where our marks are. So we're going to feed this through the hole on the bottom to the top. And I'm actually thinking here I may be able to just do both of these with just this one. Yeah. So what we're going to do here brief change of plans. There's plenty of length here, so match your ends if you've got a long piece of cordage. And then just divide this in half. There's plenty of cordage here for one. Okay, so feed it through the bottom. And through the bottom from the bottom through the other hole. Join your ends together and bring it up just so they're even. So this is what the bottom looks like. Place your foot in. Get it centered up. You're going to run this wrong just like we did the holes the uh, cordage through here three toes over and through here just like this hopefully we're gonna have enough cordage cross it just like this After it's crossed, you're going to go to your tab. You're going to run it through the hole of the tab. Go to the other side. Do the same thing. Bring it across, snug it up, bring it across the back of your heel. Cross the two pieces, and I think I shorted myself. I should have not cut that. How we're supposed to lace this is you bring it down after it's crossed, bring it down, and pass it behind these two pieces, just like this, here and here.
Yeah, we'll, we should be okay. Same thing on the other side. Behind both pieces. That doubles up your strap on the back. I'm a little short here. I didn't think I was going to have enough. And then you just tie it across your end step. We'll do the, uh, the bunny ear. Bunny ear thing here. Really short here. Actually, I missed a bunny ear, but I've got a slip in here. So that is one of the sandals. It has two straps that goes around the back. And I would recommend walking in these. That rawhide, uh, the uh, buckskin lacing is really comfortable. But I would walk, recommend walking in these as they dry. And that will help break these fibers down so they don't, uh, they don't become stiff as a board. So I'm going to show you the lacing pattern one more time just in case anybody has any confusion there with it. So underneath, up through the toes, crisscross it over the end step. Bring it through the outside, through the hole from the outside in on both sides. behind the heel and then you're just going to go behind loop it behind here and run it behind so you're just looping it and running it behind these two when you do that it cinches this I actually want to bring it up here like this It cinches everything and kind of locks it in. And then when you bring it across your end step, the top of your end step to tie it off, it automatically snugs everything down here. So I'll show you one more time. Crisscross behind the heel. You can kind of snug them up behind here. Behind both of these, you can see how it pulls right here, pulls and snugs. I'm doing the same thing on the other side. Snug it up and tie it off. There's actually another way to lace these, but I think this is a better, it would require a longer piece of quarters, but I actually think this actually works a little bit better, to be honest with you, but there is one of the sandals. Rawhide is very tough. Uh, these will be slippery in a wet environment, so if you're, if you're in the rain or on wet ground, uh, I would be very careful wearing these because they, they will become very, uh, very slippery. Uh, but uh, on dry ground, uh, they should work good. And this is a very durable material. It'll take you quite a long time to wear one of these out, actually. If you're not familiar with raw, rawhide, it's uh, very, uh, very tough very durable material but this is why we put these tabs on here and that kind of locks it in on both sides of your foot so it doesn't doesn't move around so and uh, just lace up the other one uh, in the same manner and uh, you're uh, you're all set actually very comfortable um, I normally don't wear sandals I would normally wear boots but uh, there's a lot of stickers through here and forest debris on the ground uh, I would not try to walk through here barefoot. That would be pretty uncomfortable, but uh, these are actually totally doable. Um, the rawhide's tough, so it's going to stop stickers. It would be one hell of a sticker if it, it penetrated the rawhide. But, yeah, they're totally doable. They're actually very comfortable. Um, basically just feel like a pair of flip-flops, but more durable than flip-flops. Way more durable. 
but uh, just walking around out here testing them out completely doable um, but like I said what I would do is I recommend walking them in as they dry that way you're breaking those fibers down uh, and uh, making the uh, the material more pliable but uh, yeah there you go Native American sandals yeah I just wanted to do an update here I've been walking these in as they're drying and it's very important to do so to break these the fiber down but you can see see how it's kind of fuzzy that's the fibers breaking down there and that's what you want but they're not completely dry but they're getting there they're getting uh, pretty pretty stiff so probably walk them in a little bit more it's very important if you make these uh, to uh, to wear them as they dry and just walk around in them and and uh, and just break that fiber down otherwise you're gonna wind up uh, they'll be as stiff as a board and they'll be really hard to to deal with but uh, a little update here and they mold to the shape of your foot that's why it's another very important aspect to wear these as they dry and that way they'll just mold and personalize to the shape of your feet and be uh, much more comfortable walking these in a little bit as they dry so they're kind of broken in I'll put them in with my my uh, primitive tools and projects and different things that I make I've quite a bit at home uh, my living room's kind of decorated out in a lot of a lot of stuff that I've I've built and everything but I really enjoy the opportunity to share uh, parts of my heritage Native American heritage with uh, all of you and uh, there's a lot of things that were taught to me when I was young and and uh, I didn't really embrace it until I got older and it's kind of funny how that works but uh, you know when we're young we think we know it all and uh, we get older we realize we're not we also realize we're not immortal but I, I appreciate the opportunity to uh, share these with you and uh, uh, just a lot of the uh, techniques and skills and knowledge uh, of my uh, my uh, native heritage I uh, appreciate uh, your viewership and support and I hope all of you are having an outstanding day or night depending on where you're located and I look forward to seeing all of you very soon on the next one. Everybody take care. Bye-bye.